So we're now seeing the beginning of what's been called the third industrial revolution, driven by the web and also by ever and ever cheaper access to digital fabrication tools like 3D printers and CNC machines. So where our present industrial economy is that we design things in the West, send the blueprints halfway around the world to be manufactured in a sweatshop for cheap, cheap labour costs and then ship them all the, way, the products all the way back again, we're moving into a future where the factory is potentially everywhere. Where if you want something, you no longer necessarily have to buy it, but you can actually download it, adapt it, and print it at home or in your community. As the economist John Maynard Keynes said, it's easier to ship recipes than cakes and biscuits. Obviously, like all industrial revolutions, that's hugely disruptive, socially, economically, and politically. Suddenly, your recipes, your intellectual property, become simultaneously the most valuable thing in the world, but also, paradoxically, they want to be free and open and shared. Um, if the factory is everywhere, the design team is every one. Um, one size no longer fits all. It gives us the opportunity to do for design what Wikipedia does for knowledge, what Linux does for software, to open it up. And we were fascinated by what that might mean for architecture and cities. At its core, Wikihouse is a community library of 3D models. Uh, which are shared under a Creative Commons license and they have a common set of design principles and a common set of design standards. And the aim is to make it possible for anybody to take one of those files and download them. And uh, at the moment we use SketchUp because it's free and it's dead easy to use. And they can use the WikiHouse plugin from that model um, and those files and that information to generate a set of cutting files uh, from which you can effectively print out kit of parts um, using a conventional sheet material uh, like uh, structural plywood. And those parts are assembled not unlike a very large IKEA model. Uh, it can be done very simply without the need for traditional construction skills or power tools. Um, it's done using wedge and peg connections um, using mallets which themselves are part of the printed kit. And then the lightweight frames are lifted into place, not unlike the traditional barn raising. And uh, a team of two or three people um, can complete a small house structure in about a day. And what you end up with is the basic chassis of a house, onto which can then be applied uh, things like windows or wiring services, um, insulation, and skin, uh, either generic or local solutions with materials you have available, or themselves, uh, those could be quite open, digitally manufactured items. And of course the house you end up with isn't a static product, it's a kind of factory. It has the capability within itself to make new parts for itself or even to make other houses. So we can begin to see the ghost of a fully open uh, urban development model. That's a way off. We're still in the early stages of experimenting. A few prototypes have been built around the world, and the amazing thing is that there are now a community of teams um, all over the place who have begun to take the system, adapt it, tinker with it, and improve it slightly, from Yorkshire to Christchurch in New Zealand. And we're supporting setting one up in one of Rio's favelas. WikiHouse is only a small answer, but it's a bloody huge question. Globally right now, the fastest growing cities aren't skyscraper cities, they're favelas, self-made cities. So if we're serious about tackling issues like climate change, urbanisation, global health, then architecture's traditional business model isn't going to do it, because it's beyond the reach of 98 or 99% of the world's population. As Robert Noyworth says, there isn't a state or a bank or a developer or an aid agency who's going to be able to do it if we're all just treated as consumers. What we need to be doing is building tools and infrastructure for the social economy, which is the long tail of people who build one house for themselves, to make it radically easier to produce healthy, sustainable buildings, even without professionals. Imagine if we as a society can develop low-cost, effective, scalable, adaptable, open-source solutions, not just to the problem of structure, but to things like sanitation, off-grid energy. 
develop them as sort of 21st century vernaculars and share them as part of a kind of democrat democratic commons. And once they're there, they'll be there forever. So if you're a designer, an architect, software developer, a backer, you know, come and be part of the world's biggest design team.